Before I introduce our next speaker, I want everyone to think about what they were doing when they were 13 years old. So for me, it was pretty much getting through middle school um, and the t you know, awkward time of life. Um, so our next speaker is Alexandria Visenor, and she is a 13-year-old climate activist living in New York City. Um, so after being frustrated by the lack of progress in COP24 and inspired by Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg, um, Alexandria began her own solo weekly climate school strike for uh, school strike for climate in front of the UN national headquarters in New York City on December 14th, 2018. And soon after, Alexandria became a national and international organizer for the first time ever on the youth uh, global youth climate strike, which occurred on March 15th of this year. And that historic climate strike mobilized 1.6 million youth from 123 countries <laughs> to demand climate action. So she's continuing to work. She's continuing to work as a climate as a prominent climate strike organizer, and has also is also working to bring accurate climate science and climate change education into our K through 12 school system. So at 13, planning a climate strike that engages 1.6 million young people. Um, so Alexander is also joined by her mother, Kristen Hogue, who is a graduate student at an uh, achieving a master's uh, in climate so and society at the uh, at the program at Columbia University. Um, she's also a writer for the Earth Institute's uh, website, Glacier Hub. And prior to attending Columbia, Kristen uh, completed her BA in English at UC Davis in 2018. Um, she has been a fellow with the Office of the President's Carbon Neutrality Initiative and will uh, continue to pursue her PhD at UC Davis this fall, um, researching climate change mitigation and the intersection of climate change and culture. No wonder she raised the 13th climate activist. Um, Kristen is a proud first-generation college student and spent many years balancing family employ employment and college studies. And she's quite honored to be the mother of a 13-year-old climate activist, Alexandria Visenor. So please welcome Alexandria and Kristen to the stage. They're both going to speak about their incredible work. Hi, everyone. So. <laughs> Hi everyone, so, can, can you hear me? Okay, so I actually think uh, since my mother is here, I wanted her to go first just to talk to you a bit about, you know, raising a radical climate activist. I think she can lay the foreground there. So, mom, do you wanna come first? So, um, hi everyone. I am Kristen Hogue, and I am the mother of Alexandria Via Senior. And um, first of all, I, I wanted to talk about being a mother because this is a Mother's Day rally, and we're talking about the repoliticization of Mother's Day. And um, so, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about myself as a mother. Um, Alexandria is actually the youngest of five children. So I have a 25-year-old, a 23-year-old, a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, and then, you know, six years later, <laughs> a 13-year-old. And, um, you know, being a, a mother of five children, I, I've done a lot of advocating for my children, a lot of actual political work. Um, you know, I've advocated for my children in the school system. I've advocated for my children. I have a child with a disability, and I've advocated in the disabilities system and in the education system. I've advocated for an ill child in the healthcare system. And um, so I wanted to just briefly recall, there's a famous 1970 essay by Carol Hanisch, and she's a, a feminist, and her essay was, The Personal is Political. And her essay acknowledges the connection between our personal experience, and larger social and political structures. And when you look at the work that mothers do, being a mother is a political experience. And, <laughs> and so now, as I've, I've gone to graduate school, I, I've taken on like the biggest advocate for my child as a mother. And I'm advocating for my child with the climate sort of the largest structure that I've had to advocate for my child in. <laughs> and um, 
you know, just, just a couple more, more things about climate, you know, because I study climate change at Columbia University, and I wanted to talk about how climate is, it's really close to our families, it's close to our children, it's closer than we think. And we really need to begin to look at climate as, as a living, a living structure. And looking at climate as, you know, a member of the family. And for example, when we have a family member who's ill, we teach our child how to care for that family member. And we, we explain the illness to our child. And the climate system is no different. The climate, it's right under our feet every day. It's the air that we breathe. And, and that, that family member is ill. And, you know, when a, when a person is really ill, their organs, they, they begin to shut down. And, and that's what we're seeing in the climate system right now. We're seeing the dissolution of our jet stream. We're seeing the melting of our cryosphere. We're seeing the slowing of our Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, which is the, the, the conveyor belt for our oceans. So each of these Earth systems, it's like, it's like an organ for the planet that has, has become ill. And it's our responsibility as mothers to teach our children to care for this ill family member that the climate system is. And finally, I, I, I wanted to address the elephant in the room. And that is every single reporter or journalist asks me, you know, because I'm in climate, they say, did you put your daughter up to this? And I wanted to say, yes, I absolutely did. And I actually wanted to challenge all of you. <laughs> I wanted to challenge all of you and I wanted to point out to all of the mothers in the room how all of you are also putting your children up to this. Every time you encourage your child to sacrifice their time to care for someone less fortunate than themselves, you're teaching your child how to be an activist. When you teach your child to stand up for truth, when you teach your child to have integrity, you are teaching your child how to be an activist. And when you teach your child to stand for those in oppressed and marginalized communities when they can't stand for themselves, you are teaching your child how to be an activist. So I think all mothers are responsible for making their children activists when in, just in the parenting process. So now I'd like to introduce my daughter. <laughs> and Alexandria is 13 years old and she's in the seventh grade. And um, we only moved to New York City last August. And, um, you know, she moved with me to attend graduate school. And, you know, she's actually attended some graduate school with me because I had classes in the afternoon. And I said, you have to go and sit in the back of my class. You, you, just, you can't stay home alone in that apartment. So she would sit in the back of the class in, in like, thermodynamics. <laughs> and I didn't know, if she, you know how much she was paying attention, but, but obviously she was. And, um, and then there was that fateful day in December when she just got mad. And she says, I'm going to go on strike. It was December 14th. It's the last day of COP24. And, and I laughed. And both of us thought that this was cute, that maybe she'd write an essay about it and then, and then move on with her life. Neither one of us thought it would get as much attention as it has gotten. And we certainly didn't think that the movement would grow to the place that it's grown. And so... So now, you know, she's doing some amazing work. So she'll be with me and she'll be texting and organizing and emailing. And, and I'm like, sweetheart, you have to eat. <laughs> sweetheart, it's time for bed. It, it's, it's like 2 a.m. And she says, no, it's 2 a.m. I have to call Australia. <laughs> so that's sort of what our life has begun, be, be, become. And she has... Um, you know, she's won some, some really great awards. She was honored at the Tribeca Film Festival with their Disruptor Award this year. She's, she's accepting the Common Good Foundation's Change Maker Award. She was um, recognized on Political's list of top 100 people influential in climate policy. And then we'll be back in Washington, D.C. on May 14th, where she will accept the Earth Day Network's Youth Leadership Award for 2019. <laughs> and
and this all, as a mom, this all makes me very proud. And, um, you know, but I still call her little one. <laughs> and, and so with that, I'd like to introduce my daughter and hand it over to Alexandria Villasenor. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she, I do have to say though, she's been amazing. As a teenager, you know, your sleep schedule's already crazy with school. So can you imagine having to get up to go to one of these meetings, going to an organization meeting or something at like 7 a.m. and so you have to set your alarm, but yet you're too lazy to get up and your mom's there waking you up <laughs> because you have to go speak somewhere. It's quite an experience, so thank you, mom. So I guess, uh, I guess you guys already know, but my name is Alexandra V. Senor, and I'm a 13-year-old climate activist, and I've been on climate strike for 21 weeks now in solidarity with Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg. <laughs> so for months now, students all over the world have stepped up to take responsibility for climate in action. But we shouldn't have to do this. If adults didn't in power, did their job, then we wouldn't really be in a climate emergency. And young people like me wouldn't have to worry about our future. When I moved to New York City last August, I pictured myself taking walks through Central Park, exploring museums, having a magical holiday season in the greatest city in the world. Now, that all sounds very boring now, of course. and. I didn't really intend to become a climate activist, but then last November, I visited family back in Northern California where I was born and raised, and during my trip, the Paradise Fire broke out and quickly became the worst wildfire in California history. 250 square miles burned, thousands of homes were destroyed, and many people died. To protect my health, my family sent me back to New York City early. When I returned, I researched the effects of climate change, and I learned of Greta Thunberg. Last September, Greta began striking outside the Swedish parliament demanding action from world leaders on climate change. On December 14th, I joined her and began my own climate strike in front of the United Nations headquarters. Through social media, I soon learned of other students striking for climate, and before we knew it, we were organizing together the largest global climate protest in histor history. On March 15th, 1.6 million students in over 125 countries school striked for climate, demanding action from their world leaders. A lot of people ask me what the difference is between the youth climate movement in Europe and the youth climate movement here. And what I have to say to that is it's complicated. Personally, I noticed it was difficult to mobilize students to strike in really large numbers, and I didn't know why. First, people in the United States are less secure than those in many European countries. With the healthcare tied to their employ employment and little or no paid leave, people in the United States don't have the same opportunities for activism as they do in other countries. Our media also doesn't address climate change the same way as in other countries. Here in America, some of our media gives equal time and consideration to what they say is both sides of the climate debate. Our media sometimes gives a platform to climate deniers. I had the honor to be on a panel at the Columbia School of Journalism last week where they were discussing why the media wasn't taking on the responsibility to report the facts about climate change. I told them the problem with the media is the same thing that's the problem with the fossil fuel industries. It's all for profit. But the climate crisis is real and it's not for clickbait. I also realized the key was education. Climate change education isn't taught as much, much as it should be. So to address this problem, I just announced my own startup nonprofit called Earth Uprising. <laughs> Earth Uprising will teach students about climate change and help them mobilize to take direct action. And part of Earth Uprising is also about working with our adult allies 
the youth movement's greatest asset is our adult allies. They can, they can help support us, protect us, and advocate for us. And it's because of those allies and our friends and our family too that we can't ever give up. The rally here doesn't end today, and we must do whatever it takes to force our leaders and policymakers to listen to science and the scientists. The youth movement intends to mobilize in greater numbers than ever seen before in history, and we need everyone to be with us. Now, as a student growing up in this planet, I have a future for the future. I see a world where human beings live in harmony with the Earth, respecting the boundaries of this planet that we call our home. I see a stable climate system where fossil fuels are kept in the ground and their emissions are zero. I see reforestation, ocean cleanup, habitat restoration and end to pollution, sustainable food systems, and renewable energy. We have to start imagining a new future now in order to make it come true. Like I said before, on March 15th, 1.6 million students in over 125 countries went on school strike. And our next global climate strike is on May 24th. We're coming back bigger, better, and more demanding than we ever have been before. As Greta Thunberg says, change is coming whether you like it or not. And thanks to science, the youth will not be stopped. Before I go, I want to lead you in a chant, as we always do at our climate strikes. <laughs> so, what I, so when I say our future, I want you to respond with our Earth. Okay? You. Our future. Our Earth. Our future. Our Earth. Our future. Let's just say I'm much more comfortable at protests. It's now like my home space. <laughs>